What's good everyone, Enrique with another video and this time it's going to be a quick, short and simple video on how to install the 8 out expansion card on your MPC 4000. So let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> All right, first and foremost, I figured I'd start off with just the um, the box itself of the expansion card. I got this one off of eBay for a pretty good price. It was also local, so I was able to pick it up and not buy, uh, not have to pay for shipping, which is cool. So we get the instruction manual here. I guess this is kind of like an unboxing video. Um, it's cool that he printed this out. It shows a really simple installation. I mean, this thing's really quick and simple. You have the instructions here. Hopefully they come with yours. If not, let me know because I could probably just take a picture of this and send it to you an email. Let me know in the comments below if you need the instructions. Um, it's probably a good help. From there, you have the card as well as the screws. These screws are pretty important. Make sure to not lose these because these have the mounting uh, screws and like these little stands because the card sits a little higher than the actual bottom of the MPC. So this allows room for like the digital expansion card and whatnot but since we're only installing this make sure to hold on to these just in case you need them and then of course you have the unit itself apparently this one was new and unused i think or basically brand new um, hopefully i don't just blow it right now being super staticky uh, eight outputs count them four and four comes with the card and you literally just plug this into a slot on the mpc just this right here and once you plug that in, this pretty much is good to go. The NPC is already set up to accept this. So yeah, let's go plug this thing in. All right, so first what we wanna do is remove the side panels. There's gonna be four screws on either side, so eight total. And once you remove these four screws on both sides to remove these black side panels, there's gonna be five screws on each side holding the uh, top unit onto the bottom part. So let's go ahead and get these off. All right, so another important thing to remember is that these screws, they're pretty, not proprietary, but they do vary in size depending on what part you're working on. So usually to help me keep track of things, I just leave them in whatever they came in or next to them, or you can always just label them on a piece of cardboard or paper, like some printing paper. Another pro tip. Get yourself a magnetic screwdriver. They are life-saving and game-changing. Cool, now that we got the side panels off, um, there's gonna be some screws here on the side, five on each side. You can go ahead and take those off now. You'll also notice that there's gonna be two little front screws that aren't on the white part or, uh, depending on your color, blue part of the NPC. You can ignore that one for now. Again, just to reiterate, these are different from the last screws, so make sure you label these correctly or try to keep them somewhere safe. Easy way to keep them safe, just do that. Put your screws in that little section, set it off to the side. Also, a second ago, I just mentioned uh, that you can completely ignore this screw. I completely lied. You definitely need to take that one off in order to flip the top up. That's one of the final ones holding the uh, top half to the bottom half. All right, now the, the side panels are off. We got the six off on each side as well, holding the top half to the bottom half off. And now you go to lift it. What the hell, doesn't happen. That's because there's still one more screw right down here. So let's check it out. So it's this screw right here holding on the final last like uh, front part on. Cool, now that we got that off, it lifts. That's exactly what we wanna see. But be careful to not lift it too much because you gotta make sure that you got the screws off of the backside as well. All right, so looking at the back of the beast, there's three screws here that we wanna remove. This one right here closest to the fan, this one right below this middle one, and then this one all the way on the end. These three here um, hold on parts of the top we don't need to worry about, but these three hold the top to the bottom. Cool, now that we got those off, we can go ahead and tilt this back should come right out but again be careful you see all these cables that stuff will get ripped out so i'm going to flip this over and show you what to watch out for cool so now we're taking a look at the front we have all the screws off you can go ahead and pop this thing open and if we look inside there's a few things you have your main power button which is pretty sensitive these two cables here which uh go over to like the volume pot and the record pot and then this little band here uh goes to the screen and its power and it's 
pretty finicky and uh, sensitive. I mean, all these things are sensitive. Just, just be careful with yours, you know? You could pivot this back and prop it open using like a stick or something like this to hold the top lid open, kind of like you would a, a car hood. That's probably the easiest, but another easy way to do things is to just unplug these and then have it be uh, kind of resting in the back and then just make sure to plug these back in when you're done. Also another quick side note about these, if your machine's pretty old and looks kind of brittle, be careful because these things will rip out and they are a pain to replace. So again, I think one of the best options is to just find something to prop it up for you. It sits on these two hinges here in the back, so it's not gonna fly off or slide off or anything like that. It's gonna be pretty secure. Just for safekeeping, I'm gonna go ahead and unplug my screen cable just so I don't pull it too much on accident. All right, so Ghetto McGee coming at you live here. I got my uh, tongs holding up from here. Basically they have a rubberized bottom on the wood block that I'm working on and it's not gonna cause it to slide just like that. And I have access to this whole section back here, which we can then just go ahead and start replacing our stuff. Next important step, basically the eight out card's gonna be sitting on this taller golden stand right here, as well as this screw here. I'll use my screwdriver to point it out. This one right here. So what you wanna do is of course, undo that one and we're gonna take it out because we need to put, see that magnetic screw? Yeah, that's the way we do it. Uh, we're gonna put one of these stands that, that came in the packaging, oh God, uh, in that spot. So it's a simple, just put it in there and twist it on. And we're gonna be using the shorter one of the two because the longer one is clearly gonna be for that guy. And then this is on, um, another like PCB card, which is already lifted. So once it's on there, bada bing, bada boom, we're set. You can now see it there, the lifted guy. And uh, yeah, oh, also in case you haven't already, go ahead and take these screws out of the back um, to open this slot up. All right, so we took off this little gold screw to put on this mounting post right here on the PCB. So keep this golden screw because when we put the 8 out expansion card on these two mounting posts, we're going to use this screw again to screw into that same mounting post. All right, here we are in it to win it. Final stretch. Basically, now we're just going to kind of slowly slide this into here. You'll see that it kind of wants to slot in a little bit and bam, it just kind of sits on the two mounting posts. You can see it there and there. So. We're gonna take one screw from that bag of the original uh, stuff that came in the box. And I'm gonna use that for this, this little mounting post right here. Magnetic screwdriver. Again, get yourself one now. They're cheap, man. Harbor Freight. Cheap tools. If it breaks, just buy yourself another one. I'm gonna use the gold screw again, like I just mentioned. So gold screw on this mounting post. And this one might feel a little funky just in case you didn't tighten it down all the way the original uh the first time around but that's okay because it's just gonna again like once you tighten down to the mounting post it'll then tighten itself down onto the pcb below it so another thing too is to make sure you get the front so i didn't go too tight on these just because i need to make sure that i get the um the two screws over here in the front side which are those smaller like kind of uh i guess you can call them black or bronze looking screws that we used to hold this piece on so once you take this piece off save the four little screws so you can screw this in oh also don't forget this cable goes right here into this into this slot down here not the top not the long one i mean you can't you can't mess this up it's it's really easy we're just plugging this thing in really if you've plugged in a microwave you could install eight outs on your mpc all right now that we have that done i'm gonna go ahead and take off my uh want to be kickstand slowly lower this it looks like i got everything in there set this down and i'm not going to screw anything else back in just yet right i want to make sure that this thing works so i'm gonna spin it put a couple screws in on the back just so i don't push in too hard when i'm plugging cables into the eight out expansion card and we're going to test it and if it works then we're going to tighten everything up and put it back together super simple all right, here we are at the back again. As you can see, we got one, two, three, four that we got to screw in. These little black screws that uh, originally came out from the little black hidden uh, panel, just a little placeholder, will work just fine. You might want to get one in a little bit, not too too tight, just so, uh, again, you don't kind of like strip or bend anything. Just like placehold them real quick. 
cool. So now that I got them all pretty much good to go, bam, 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 locked in nice and tight. So now let's plug this thing in and see if it actually works. All right, let's go ahead and power this puppy up. Ha <laughs> ha, I forgot to plug my screen back in. So don't be like me, remember that. Again, for safekeeping, I usually unplug the power just to make sure there's no electricity going within it. Give it about 10 seconds as well, just to kind of let it kill itself off, I guess. I don't know if that even actually works, but let's give it some time. Cool. Open this up. Grab my screen cable and just plug it back in. There we go. Bam. Plug it back in. Power. And there she blows. All right, moment of truth. Um, if I go into my program, I have a sample loaded here. If you go to your KG mix, the way you're gonna assign your outputs kind of depends on whether you wanna do it per program or per sound. So in this setup, I'm gonna test it per sound. So in the KG mix of the program, under output, where it says multi, if I hit it right now, we don't hear anything, right? Because it's going out of the multi and I only have something plugged into number one output, not the left and right master output. So scroll the wheel, LR1, that's what we want to hear. Moment of truth, yeah. So that's exactly what we want. I want to test all of them. The order from, uh, I guess you can say from right to left on the outputs is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight closest to the left and right output, then one through eight. It feels a little backwards, but you, you'll get used to it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and plug into number two. So let's see, we're on one, nothing. If I go to two, cool. And eight, that's exactly what we wanna see. So bam, it works, the eight output works. Again, just install everything you did in the exact opposite order of this. Basically, open this back up, tighten down those screws to make sure they're good. You already got the back ones tightened. Then after you do that, you want to get the back half of the two, uh, the three screws on the back. Remember those three kind of hidden screws? They're the small little skinny black ones like this. Um, this right here. And then once you do those, you want to do the six on each side of these here, holding down the top to the bottom half, as well as that one hidden screw underneath the armrest in the front. And then you put the side panels on and you're good to go. You're making beats, you're making some house music, some hip hop stuff. I want to check it out. Leave it a link to your SoundCloud or whatever, your Spotify down in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. And yeah, if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, give me a thumbs down and let me know how I can make the video better for you. If there's other NPC videos you want to see some stuff on pertaining to the 4000. Let me know. I'd love to do them. It's my favorite machine. And yeah, otherwise, you guys know the drill. Share the love. Share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.